Hello and welcome to this, the second part of a very brief look at some of the exciting new features of DPA version 6.2. In part one, we looked at the administrative logins, licensing, the unified dashboard, and the new object search. In this part, we shall consider how we may more easily generate a support bundle. We look at enhancements to data domain analysis and reporting a great leap forward in the use of smart groups, and just one or two tweaks to the user properties dialog. The all-important supporting documentation is, as usual, available from the link shown, including the release notes. As in part one, please take a moment to pause and review the extensive list of technical differences and new features included in DPA 6.2. In earlier versions of DPA, Satisfying requests by EMC support personnel for DPA configurations may have required downloading and using a REST client. The administrator may have been unfamiliar with the operation and use of REST, requiring perhaps lengthy interaction between support and the user. Indeed, the use of REST clients may not always have been supported by corporate policy. In version 6.2, the need for a REST client has been eliminated for this purpose by providing a single button click from within the DPA UI. This also removes the need to log on to the DPA server host. So let's now take a quick look at this much requested feature, which is now available through the Admin, System, Configure System Settings, Server path in the UI. On clicking the Generate Support Bundle button, you will be asked to where the bundle is to be saved, and a zip file of the required files will be saved to that location. This may then be added to the service request. Please note, at present the Generate Support Bundle collects that data previously available only through the REST API. A future service pack will incorporate inclusion of the remaining basic log collections, thereby making this facility a one-stop shop for collection of the standard support requirements. The advent of DPA version 6.2 has given us the opportunity to introduce a much deeper dive into the internal functions and activity of a data domain object, specifically client aggregation and aged file analyses. This, however, comes with a resource overhead, which is needed to process the huge amounts of data generated and which may not be required by all users. Therefore, a separate tool the Data Domain Data Processor tool has been created. Running this tool places a data collection burden on both the Data Domain and the DBA application server, and therefore should not be run as a matter of daily routine, and probably should only be run when concerns are raised regarding the efficiency of operation of the Data Domain, with special regard to the logical space occupancy on the Data Domain for Avamar, Networker, NetBackup and Arman. The installation and use of this tool is fully documented in the Installation and Administration Guide, but it is appropriate to single out just one or two of the additional reports which may be generated. These reports will only be visible in the menus once the tool has been run. Let's first look at, under Resource Utilization Storage, the Data Domain File Distribution by Count. When run, this will give a representation of files by age. This information could be invaluable to determine if the data domain contains stale data or in comparing the file utilization profiles of several data domains. Another most useful report facilitated by the data domain data processor tool is the clients with low dedupe ratio, where we can display and further investigate those clients which are presenting a lower than expected dedupe capability. The innate capability of allowing users to drag and drop objects into logical but static groupings was further improved in DPA 6 to introduce the concept of the smart group. In DPA 6.2, this has been further enhanced, due in part to user requests, to provide multi-level smart groups, creating multiple layers of child objects within a single smart group. This goes further, permitting the user to configure the fields used and the type of objects created without limiting the number of configured levels. Tracking of changes to smart groups is also performed if the Enable History feature is switched on. This feature, 
along with the application of chargeback and protection policies to different levels, allows the user to run historical reports against the smart groups. Let's take a brief overview of what this looks like. OK, so first of all, let's create a static group called My Smart Groups. And under this, we shall select to create a smart group. Here you will see that in addition to the single level smart group, we now have the multi level option. In selecting Configure Smart Group Level, we may select the report forming the basis of the smart group. And here we shall select Backup Client Configuration Report. And apply this to a scope. Here we shall select the EMC Network Backup Service and a time period of now, as we are going to run this on demand in this case. In the departure from the single level smart groups, we can now select via the checkboxes multiple report fields. Selecting the client and the OS, on reviewing the smart group, we can see that the client field has been allocated tree level 1 and the OS as tree level 2. But this may be changed by using the move up, move down buttons to change the ordering of the folder. The field type may be modified by employing the appropriate drop-down, but in this case we shall stick with the backup client type with the linked field of server. Returning to the properties panel, we'll give this smart group a meaningful name of all clients by OS and a frequency of on demand or indeed a user selected schedule. The enable history is set to off. In the inventory, on expanding our newly created All Clients by OS smart group, this shows that we have both Linux and Windows clients available. We may now report against these smart groups or extend the operation further by applying different policies to each of the discovered subgroups. Let's enter policies, chargeback policies, and apply the silver policy to our Linux members and the gold policy to our Windows members. On doing so, we may now run a chargeback summary report against our smart group. And this will show the split of chargeback by OS type. You should now see that by using the multi-level hierarchical smart groups, this will facilitate creation of some quite sophisticated reporting structures. And finally, the user properties dialog has a redesigned appearance under DPE version 6.2. This now splits the Preferences tab into two components, the Preferences and the new Report Preferences, the effect being to reduce the apparent complexity and size of the previous panel. Under Report Preferences, this now contains the many parameters the user may specify for their own reporting requirements. The Preferences tab now shows the parameters for the general viewing of DPA, including the tree load depth, that is, the displayed expansion of the scope and the home group, that is, from which point in the inventory the expansions will be shown. Thank you for watching.